It's great to see you here this morning. This is a great turnout for a, a missions weekend, and I've got so many people here that I that I know, and uh, I honestly, Cross Community kind of feels like a second home to Amy and I. I've been here so many times, and you always are so gracious to welcome us, and it's it's our honor to be back. And Randy mentioned, uh, that's Amy over there, wave Amy. That's my wife, Amy. 47 years she's been my wife. And then um, my sister-in-law, Renee, wave at us, Renee, over there. If you call Church of God World Missions, that's the lady that will answer the phone. And uh, and so she is very important part of our uh, World Missions program for the Church of God. 185 countries now, Randy. It's uh, We have... It's amazing what God's done in our missions work, but uh, you're here, and um, I I would be remiss if I didn't say at least hello to Alex and Leah Abiola. Uh, Where is Alex? Alex, I hope hope today that it's your day to find the Lord. If you could get saved today, this is going to be a great weekend. Long-term friends, well, I, I think one of the greatest missionaries the Church of God has is that couple right there, and uh, they are incredible. So I've been asked to speak uh, this morning, kind of kick us off. I won't take long today, but if you've got a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 25. I want to read a very familiar verse to you. You all know this verse. You've heard it. It's, it's mentioned in three of the Gospels. And this is how the verse reads. He, the Lord, said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of of the Lord. Faithful servant. What a title. I was having a conversation with uh, one of my dearest friends who happens to be over the director for the ministry to Israel for the Church of God, and I've known him since I was just a young teenager. And we were, we were talking recently because of my new position that I'll tell you about later on. I'm now living in Tennessee, and we were talking, having a conversation, and this, this man travels all over the world all the time. I mean, he's, he's everywhere. And he told me in the conversation, he said, yes, I have to fly to Italy next week. And he looked at me and he said, but I'll be honest with you, I really don't want to go. I'm so tired. But I know his heart. I know, I know him. I know if the Lord opens the door and it's someplace God's asked him to go, he's going to go. And I, I said something to him that kind of caught me off guard. I'm not that smart, but I just said, you know, it's exhausting sometimes. It's exhausting being a faithful servant. Now, I want you to let that sink in for just a minute, because when you're doing the work of the Lord, it is exhausting. It's not easy. It is the work of the Lord. And so when we, when we stand before the Lord, let me ask you, how do you want the Lord to see you someday when we stand before the Lord? Do you want Him to see you as somebody that's really refreshed and really energized, but maybe you left some things on the table that you should have done and could have done, but didn't do? Or would you rather stand before the Lord kind of exhausted and worn out and maybe beat up a little bit, but you know you did everything that God called you to do? I don't know about you. I want to be in the second category. Um, I'm getting older, and it seems like every time I come down here, I got something wrong with me. I'm getting ready to have knee replacement surgery, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I just have to tell you that it, I'm, I'm excited about it. But that's what happens when you get older. Things start wearing out. In the work of the Lord, when we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and we're doing it with all of our energy, and we're doing missions work, or we're teaching a Sunday school class, or we're singing in the praise team, or whatever it is, when you're doing it to your fullest, most passionate ability, it becomes exhausting. Jesus used the title servant often. In fact, Jesus said that his servants were blessed. The, the greatest men and women in the Bible are referred to as servants. For example, the Bible would say, have you considered my servant Moses? Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant David? And on and on and on it goes. So the title of servant 
is really one of great esteem. When we say, look, I, I, I just, I want to give all that I have. I, I'm giving everything I've got. And even if I know I'm going to be exhausted doing it, that's kind of the way it goes. It's just how it kind of works. And if, if you're like most people in church, I've, I'm, I've been raised in church, I've been in church all my life, you know, the, the, when, and I used to tell my congregation this often, when God's asking, there's only one good answer. And the answer is yes. If the Lord says, I want you to do this, I mean, you can't bargain with God, can you? I mean, it, you never win. If the Lord says, I've tapped you to do this job, I've called you to do this, you're going to go into a place that's not going to be easy, they may not even receive your ministry, it's going to be tough, the answer has to be yes. When God's asking, the answer is yes. Now, how do we respond to all of that? If we're just going to be a servant, I'm going to give you three quick things this morning and I'll be done. Here's the first one. The first one is, just simply answer the call. If God's calling... I mean, why fight with the Lord? Why, why fight with God? If he's, a, if he's calling, just say, okay, I'll do it. You know, and if you're like me, almost everybody that I know that works in a ministry, especially missionaries, you become a multitasker. You know, I, I used to think it would be great if, you know, when God called me to preach, I thought, this is going to be awesome. So me also, I show up on Sundays and preach a sermon and kind of lay around the rest of the week and, you know, Sleep late and eat chicken and enjoy life. And if, if you, uh, Pastor Randy, I'm sure that's kind of your life, right? No, it's a full-time, all-the-time job, and it entails many, many things. When I tell you, I think I've worn so many hats, and just, just like you, I've, I've, I've had multiple tasks. I've been a youth pastor. I've been a worship leader. I've been a, a senior pastor, lead pastor. Uh, I have been a, um, a office staff member. I've been a janitor. I've been a writer. I've been a webmaster. I've been a graphic designer, and it, during COVID, I I learned to be a live stream producer. You know, I mean, you just, you just do the stuff when the Lord presents the opportunity. You just say, yes, okay, yes. You look for the need. That's what we do. And that's what, we, that's what we're doing here today in this missions conference. We're talking about needs that are represented all over the world and here at home. What's the need? How can I help you fulfill it? How can I help accomplish the work of God? Uh, the last church I pastored before I, I transitioned to the ministry I'm in now, I had a group of elders, and one of our elders, we, we had a, every week in our church, the elders took turn locking up the building, unlocking and locking up the building. So, you know, six or eight guys, and uh, they would go around, it, it, your Sunday, you stayed after everybody left, and then you locked up the building. I had one elder that informed me straight up that uh, that was below him. That he, God called him to be an elder, not a, you know, he was, he, he wasn't going to be the guy to lock up the doors and, and open the doors and stuff. And I have to tell you, he didn't last as an elder very long in, in the church because it's just, you got to be willing to get low and do the task, right? You answer the call. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you are labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Sounds good. I like it. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke and a burden is a part of the process. And the Lord says, if you want to be like me, answer the call, take the yoke, bear the burden, and really, inside, deep down here, you'll find rest for your souls. Doesn't say anything about your body. Being a faithful servant is exhausting. Turn to somebody and say that. Being a faithful servant is exhausting. And then you can just shake your head and say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Here's the second thing. So answer the call. Here's the second thing. Do the job. So right now, for the first time in many, many years, I grew up right outside of Washington, D.C., and I grew up as a Washington Senators baseball fan until the Washington Senators packed up one night and moved to Texas and became the Texas Rangers. And so all of us kids became Baltimore Orioles fans. Anybody from the D.C. area here? I'm the only one. Well, the, for the first time in years, we have something to cheer about. 
The Baltimore Orioles are doing fantastic this year. And I'm so thrilled. I finally have put my Baltimore Orioles shirt back on and my hat back on. I'm, I'm proud to be an Oriole this year. I love baseball. I love sports. One of the things I love about baseball, especially if you're sitting up in the stands and you're above the play on the field, is that every time the ball is hit, every guy on that field has a job. There's a place where he's supposed to be. There's somewhere that if the ball's hit the right field, then they all know I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to go there. I'm supposed to back up the third baseman. Pitcher's coming in to back up the catcher, whatever it may be. And I'm always fascinated by it because even though the ball wasn't hit to that guy, he still has a job. Isn't it that way in the church? We all have a job. And when we don't do the job, something goes missing and somebody has to work doubly hard. You know, as a pastor, how many times on a Sunday did I show up and somebody would say, well, so-and-so's not here today to teach that class. So after you want to punch them in the throat or something, then you kind of get over that and you pray through that. Um, Then you got to go to work. You got to find somebody to fill that spot. Isn't it great in the kingdom of God when the Lord, you say yes to the Lord and you also say, and by the way, I'll do the job, whatever it may be. Whatever the job may entail, I'll do it. And when it comes to missions, nobody, nobody multitask more than missionaries and the work of missions. People that are doing the ministry, that are doing the job. There's a, there's a guy in the Bible. I think I mentioned this in my first book, which if you don't have it, by the way, you should get that. And also my second book, uh, you should get that. And I'm happy to sign them for you. And the third one that I hope is coming out real soon. Listen to this verse. It's out of 1 Chronicles chapter 27. Baal Hanan, the Gederazite, was over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowlands. And Joash was over the store of oil. Okay, I don't know who Joash is. He's mentioned one time in the Bible. And his job is to watch oil. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that entails, but I can, I can only, uh, oil was important. Oil was important. It was, a, it was a cooking source. It was a lighting source. So Joash has a job, and that is, I got to keep my eye on the oil, make sure the oil's okay. Joash comes home, he smells like oil. His clothes are covered with oil, and his wife is fussing at him, why did you get oil on your clothes today? Because it's my job. I have to watch the oil. I have to make sure that it's safe. I have to make sure that nobody steals it. I have to make sure that we have oil for cooking, that we have oil for lights. Just one job. He's over the store of oil. I don't know what your job in the kingdom is, but it's important. If it's keeping the nursery, if it's, if it's answering phone calls, if it's stuffing envelopes, whatever it may be, your job's important. So answer the call, do the job. You follow with me? One more. Be great. Be great. Matthew chapter 20. I love, I love this story. Matthew chapter 20 tells the story of the mother of James and John. Now, I, I love to kind of see this story in my mind because the mother of James and John come to Jesus. There's, there's 12 disciples They're all kind of gathered around. She walks up. This is a first century Jewish mama who walks up to the Lord and says, I would like for my two sons to be promoted. I want one to sit at your right hand and one to sit at your left hand. I want my boys to be special. And Jesus, of course, responds to her. Now, you don't really know what it is you're asking. And he he explains to her that to do this is going to require a whole lot of sacrifice. But what, what I love about the story are the other ten grown men who are listening to this and watching this conversation, and the Bible says they became indignant. They, they are talking among themselves, who does she think she is? And who do they think they are? What's, what's this all about? And because she's asking to promote my boys, and they begin to dispute among themselves, and the Lord 
knows it, and he hears it, and he responds to it. And this is what he says. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The kingdom of God does not sit on the shoulders of superstars. It sits on the shoulders of servants. And being a faithful servant is exhausting. Whatever your job is today, whatever brought you here into this room, whatever funds you give to missions, whatever you do to prepare for a conference like this, if you're on the prayer team, one of those things that nobody sees, but you're in here praying and you're calling on the name of the Lord and you're asking God to fill the house with his glory. If you're on the worship team, that when nobody's around, you're practicing, you're learning words to songs and you're learning how to lead a congregation in worship. If you're, if you're cleaning the carpet, you're vacuuming the carpet, you're making coffee, or you're somewhere off trying to take care of some five-year-old kid who's about to drive you up a wall. It's exhausting. But it's the greatest title you'll ever be given in the kingdom. Faithful servant. Let me encourage you this weekend to ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? How can I fulfill your job for me? How can I be great? How can I answer the call? How can I do the job? How can I be great? By being a faithful servant. Father, we love you today. I pray that the rest of this day is filled with your glory, with your presence. Thank you for men and women who have given up a Saturday to be here and be a part of something so vastly important. Bless your people. Bless this church. Bless every missionary and ministry represented here today. We give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.